I have a data set open and I'm going to look to see whether there's a difference in performance between exam 1, exam 2, and exam 3. So these would be measures that um, I've got data for for all students across the sample and uh, we could look, I mean there could be several situations where this would be useful um, if you wanted to look at maybe this is at the end of the semester, one semester out and one year out to see if students retain information or if you've got multiple measures on the same people um, then this would be another situation where a repeated measures ANOVA would be appropriate. To run it you'll go up to Analyze, General Linear Model and down to Repeated Measures so it's basically like doing more than one paired t-test at the same time. So we can give the variable a name. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and keep it as factor one because the name doesn't really matter. And then you tell it the number of levels. So if you have three measures, you'll type in a three here. If you have more than three measures, you'll type in whatever it is and uh, then we say add, whoops I've already got it there, so if it's not already there you click on add and then what we need to do is um, actually I'm just going to reset just to make sure everything starts from scratch, so 3, add and then once the variable is listed here I'm going to select the name and click define and what I have to do is tell SPSS which variables will be the first, second, and third. So I'll click on the number one here. That's going to be exam one. I move that over into that spot. The number two will be exam two. The number three will be exam three. So you can move whatever you need over into that spot. Um, we don't need to click on the post hocs because those are going to be handled in a different way. Um, which will be under options. So click on options, move factor one over to the right, tell it to compare main effects and we will actually use the default which is LSD which is least significant difference. And then down here we'll choose descriptive statistics which will give you your means and standard deviations and then estimates of effect size which will give you eta squared. Um, we don't need to do homogeneity tests which we did do under ANOVA just because this is all the same group, just multiple measures for each group. And then we click continue, click OK, and then we'll actually get our output. So we have a table that shows our means and standard deviations and so if I just eyeball those I'm ranging from about 81 to 84 they seem kind of close to me standard deviations are relatively close to each other as well but then to find out whether the overall test is significant we go down into this multivariate tests area and you're going to look at the line labeled Wilkes's lambda. Um, that's the one, uh, there, there are different ways of, of uh, doing the math part of it and Wilkes's lambda is the one that we're going to use. So the Wilkes's val uh, lambda value is 0.944, you would just report that and then you would say F and then in parentheses 2 comma 48, that's your degrees of freedom, equals 1.41, that's your actual F value, the P value is 0.25, and then eta squared is 0.06 when you round, um, which is small. So the P value in this case is not significant, so what that tells us is there's no difference in the means between exam 1, exam 2, and exam 3. So because that's the case, we don't need to look at post hocs, but I'm just going to scroll down to show you where they are, and then I'll do one more example that does require post hocs. So the post hocs are the table labeled pairwise comparisons, and this is where it shows us one compared to two, that p-value is not less than 0.05, so it's not significant one compared to three, this is not significant, 
and then two compared to three. This is also not significant. So this matches the fact that the overall model told us there were no differences, so we didn't find any here. So I'm just going to pause for a second and open up another data set. So I have another data set open. This one is looking at um, basically whether fathers who have uh, children with various disabilities um, play with or interact with their children more based on the child's gender and the child's disability. So there are three different scales that were examined in this study, caretaking responsibility, emotional support, and rec time quality. So <clears throat> what I'm interested in here is finding out whether there's a difference in the scales between each person in the study. So I'm going to go up to Analyze, General Linear Model, Repeated Measures again. I'll just keep it factor three or factor one, and since there are three different scales, I'll type the three in. Click Add, and then click my factor one with the three and define. So I'm going to make the caretaking responsibility my first one. Emotional support is the second one and rec time quality is the third one. We go to options, move factor one over, compare main effects, keep it at LSD, and then choose descriptive stats and estimates of effect size, continue, OK. So with this one, when I scroll down a bit, I see the mean for the first one is about 5.9, 5.9 for emotional support, rec time is 4.6. So it looks like there could potentially be some differences there. Standard deviations are pretty similar. So now when I go down to the multivariate tests box, Wilkes's lambda is 0.85, F parentheses 2 comma 58 equals 5.29, P equals 0 0.008, that is, oops, that is significant. Sorry about that. And then my A to squared is 0.15. That's actually a, a large value. So because this shows us that the, the there are some differences, we actually have to go down to the pairwise comparisons, which is the, the set of post hocs, to find out where the differences are. So when I look at the difference between 1 and 2, that p-value is not less than 0.05, so that is not significant. The comparison between 1 and 3, this is less than 0.05, that tells us there are differences between the first and the third variable. And then when I look at the second compared to the third, I see that those also are values where the difference um, or the p-value is less than 0.05, so that's a significant difference as well. So if I go back to my descriptives, I can see that 1 is actually higher than 3 and 2 is actually higher than 3, but there was no difference between 1 and 2 according to the pairwise comparisons.